Welcome to our video presentation on the eight essentials for creating accessible Adobe PDF documents. This presentation was created by California State University Fullerton Campus Information Technology Training. This video is intended as an overview of the entire process. At the conclusion of this video, you'll see several tutorials that will follow that will demonstrate the individual skills that are talked about in this video. So be sure to check out those um, presentations for more information. Step one in creating an accessible PDF document is to bookmark the different sections within your content. Creating bookmarks in your document makes it easy to access the different chapters or subsections within your document and makes it easy for a reader to understand the overall scope and organization of the document. Bookmark titles should be marked with the appropriate H level or heading tag. And if you've imported this document from Microsoft Word and you've used the appropriate heading levels in that Word document, your different sections will already have the appropriate heading tags in them. If not, bookmarking your different sections will apply the appropriate H level heading tag to the content that you bookmark. The second step in creating an accessible PDF document is to create articles within your document. Now, not all documents need articles created with them. If your document is very sequential in nature, then you don't need to create articles. However, documents like newsletters that have an article that starts on one page and then picks up at another point on another page are the kinds of documents that do need to have articles created with them. That way, somebody that's using a screen reader simply has to access the articles feature within the PDF reader, and they can read the entire article all at once without having to skip from page to page. Step 3 in creating an accessible PDF document is to ensure that the reading order of the material within the document is correct. Now this is more of a problem with older versions of Adobe Acrobat than newer versions. So if you're using Adobe Acrobat 8, 9, or 10, you shouldn't have any difficulty with reading order. The one exception to this is if you've initially created the document and used tables to simulate columns of text instead of using the columns tool inside of, let's say, Microsoft Word, that's when you're going to have the difficulty. So again, reading order shouldn't be much of a problem if the Microsoft Word document is set up correctly in the first place. And the only time you're probably going to have to be concerned with the reading order of the document is if you've used tables to simulate columns of text. And in a lot of cases, it's going to be a lot easier to go back and correct the Microsoft Word document or the source document and replace those tables with actual columns as opposed to correcting the reading order inside of Adobe Acrobat. And again, this is only when you're using columns in tables to simulate columns of text. If you are using a table in a Word document or a PDF document, and it's actually a table of information with row headings and column headings, like we're used to seeing, you won't have any difficulty with reading order. The fourth step in creating an accessible PDF document is going to be to use the correct semantic tags within your document. Now, if you've set up your document with Microsoft Word and you format it using the regular Word formatting tools, you shouldn't have any problem with the semantic tags coming over. There is one notable exception to that that we'll talk about in just a little bit. But the word semantic basically just means to have meaning. And so a semantic tag describes what the content within a document actually is. For example, a heading should be marked very clearly as a heading within the document. Body text should be marked as a paragraph. Images should be marked as an image. Tables should be set up as tables. The one um, notable exception to this from Microsoft Word is going to be tables. And it's going to be the headings within the tables, the different row and the column headings. And you need to make sure that those headings are marked as well as the regular headings within the document. So you want to make sure that you've set up the correct semantic tags within your PDF document.
And again, with the exception of table headings, if you've set up your document with Microsoft Word and use the correct Word tools, then all of your semantic tags are going to fall over. And you'll see some examples of this in the videos that will follow. The fifth step in creating an accessible PDF document is going to be to add text descriptions to any images that you've used in the document. Now, there are two kinds of images that are used in documents. There are images that convey information, and then there are images that we use that are purely decorative. A good example of this might be a photograph. A photograph is probably going to convey information to the reader and therefore it's going to need a text description for somebody using a screen reader. On the other hand, if you have a decorative line or some sort of, um, you've seen the flourishes that sometimes people use in documents, those kinds of images that don't convey any information don't need a text description. So we're only talking about providing text descriptions for images that convey information. Now, there's a limit on the number of characters that a screen reader will read back in a text description, and that's 255 characters. If you have a simple image, like a photograph, that can be adequately described in those 255 characters, you should just go ahead and include that alternative text. If you've included the alternative text in your Microsoft Word document before you converted it into a PDF, that text description will carry over as well. However, if you have a more complex image, let's say like a chart or a graph, that will require more than 255 characters to adequately describe the information that it conveys. In that case, you're going to want to use the alternative text description for just a brief summary of the, um, of the uh, image. And then you're going to want to point the reader or the listener to an appendix in the document that has a more complete description of that image. So again, simple images that convey information use just an alternative text description. But for a more complex image, like a chart or a graph, that you may need a more expansive explanation on, use the alternative text for sort of a summary, and then point the listener or the reader to an appendix in the document that has a more complete text description of the image. Step 6 is probably the most straightforward of all the steps in creating an accessible PDF document. And that's if you have links in your document, make sure that they actually work. Make sure that when the user clicks on them or accesses the link that they actually go to the location that they point to. Now there are two kinds of links that we usually use in documents. One would be an external link. An example of that might be a link to an outside website. And the second kind of link that we use in documents would be navigation links. And these would be the kinds of links that you find in tables of contents or in foot and endnotes that will take the um, reader or user to that place and then back to where they were in the text. Now, if you set up your uh, document inside of Microsoft Word and you haven't removed any of the external linking features, in other words, if you haven't proactively said, no, don't make this an actual link, I just want the text of the link there, your links will work fine when they come over into your PDF document. And in the same way, if you've used the correct tool inside of Word to create a table of contents or do your foot and end noting, again, those links will work. So usually, unless you've proactively prevented a link from working inside of your Word document, your links are going to come over and they're going to work just fine. But you do need to check your PDF document to make sure that when an individual clicks on that link or accesses that link, um, that it does go to the correct place. The seventh step in creating an accessible PDF document is going to be to use color and contrast appropriately. As far as color goes, the first thing to remember is that color cannot be the only way that information is conveyed to a reader. Because if it is, people with low vision or people with certain types of color blindness may not be able to access the information. 
for example, if you have a chart in a document and one of the columns or one of the bars in the chart is one color and the other bars are different colors, you can't just say look at the red bars or look at the blue bars and this is what they mean. There has to be some other way other than color to convey that information. And the easiest way to do that with a chart or a graph is to add some sort of a pattern on it. Put a cross hatching on it or some dotting or some sort of a pattern on the chart or graph or the element that you're trying to convey uh, the information for in addition to the color. And this is one reason why when you look at a link you'll see that the link usually changes its color usually into that blue color but it's also underlined there's a second visual clue that that's actually a link so somebody who couldn't tell that it was a link from the color will be able to tell from that extra visual clue as far as contrast goes you need to make sure that there's adequate contrast between your foreground and that would usually be your text or your fonts and the background of the document and usually what that means is using a very light colored background and using very dark text on top of it or using a very dark background and having very light text on it you should uh, you shouldn't use complementary colors for both foreground or background colors because again people with different types of color blindness or people with low vision may not be able to distinguish between the foreground and the background so make sure that there's as much contrast as possible between your text and the background of the document Finally, you're going to want to think about the fonts that you use in your document and the way your text is spaced within your document. If you're using different kinds of fonts in your document, you're going to want to make sure that you use a relatively standard font for your body text. And what that's probably going to mean is a font like Arial or Times New Roman. Where people really get in trouble with using fonts, though, is with headings. You want to make sure that you use a very clear and legible font for the different kinds of headings in your document. Using fancy or decorative fonts that are more, again, decorative than functional should be avoided. And that way people, again, with low vision can distinguish the individual characters. You also need to think about your font sizing. Fonts that are extremely small in your document are going to be very difficult for people with low vision to be able to read. So you want to make sure that the body text in your document is usually between about 10 and 14 points. And again, that's not an absolute rule, but it's a general guide to stay with. If you've got things like footnotes in your document, those might be a little bit smaller, maybe 9 points, but you definitely don't want to go any smaller than that with those elements. So make sure that your body text is large enough so that um, individuals can easily read that text. As far as the spacing goes, there's two elements that you want to consider here. One is the line spacing between the different lines within your paragraph. And you want to make sure that line spacing is at least 120% of the actual font size. And fortunately for us, if you're using Microsoft Word or another popular editing program, the line spacing is always going to be at least 120% of the font size. So unless you've manually gone and changed it to make the line spacing smaller, you won't have to worry about that. And usually, again, where we get in trouble with both font sizes and the line spacing is when people try and cram too much information onto a single page. And then again, with the spacing, you need to ensure that there's adequate spacing between your paragraphs so that individuals with low vision are going to be able to clearly distinguish where one paragraph ends and another one begins. So you want to make sure your fonts are very clear and legible. You want to make sure that the line spacing in your document isn't compressed down too much. And you want to make sure that there's adequate spacing in between your paragraphs as well. Thank you for taking the time to view this presentation on the eight steps to creating accessible Adobe PDF documents.
The videos that follow this presentation are demonstrations of the different skills and principles that we talked about in these eight steps. So be sure to take some time and view the following videos. Thank you.